Hey folks, welcome back to the nav bar. We're talking about some advanced changes you can make to the nav bar, talking about the font size, the color, the type, weight, decoration, shadow and color, all styles that you can change and modify to suit your needs. If you really want to change it from the uh, the default settings, or maybe you've changed the, the nav bar background color or nav bar color, and you want to have something that matches up a little bit better. So let's dive right into Dreamweaver, go into the site and the styles folder and open up the styles.css. Now we don't have to go down too far but we're going to scroll down. There we go. There's some common font settings right there. Then we get into the nav bar. You'll notice when you go through these style.css or pretty much most of the style sheets that we've tried to comment it as best we can. Like I said, this is more for advanced users, but it's definitely something you want to learn if you're not an advanced user. And I'm going to show you just a couple of tricks to get you moving. If you do know what you're doing, scroll down to the nav bar section. You'll see how everything is listed out here. And from this point on, it's all going to make sense. All I can suggest you do is open up or preview, for example, your index page or any one of your pages that would use this nav bar component, which is pretty much all of them. Right? So we have a page open. Here's the nav bar. Right? And we start making our changes. As we make a change, we go back to our, our page, we hit the refresh button, and away we go. I'll give you a couple of examples here, and then you'll be on your own. We can change the font size. We can make it a little bit bigger. Let's go with um, 18 pixels. And let's change the color. When I change a color, what I typically do, because I'm extremely lazy, and I really don't know what color I want to go with all the time, I'll just double click on the hex color value. That's this six character number thing right here. Just double click on it, then I hit the backspace. One, two, three, four. Basically I backspace right up until my cursor is blinking against the R in the word color. Then I use the shift and the colon key to activate my color picker. Like I said, lazy. Then I just double click on the color picker tool and then I can sort of eh, scroll through here and figure things out. Let's go with something really bright. Let's go with a bright yellow. Okay, good. Now I can change the font family. Same thing. I'm just going to scrub out the existing font family here. Backspace right up to the Y in the word family, shift, colon. Oh, look, I get a short code or a short selection of sort of predefined what's called web friendly fonts. Most likely, these fonts here, you're going to have them on your computer. If you don't have Cambria or Hofler or Text or Liberation, you're going to have Times or Times New Roman, right? So these are sort of groups of text that most individuals will have on their on their computer or on their device because you have to know unless you're loading in a font from like Google fonts or, or using a uh, font face loader if a user doesn't have the font installed in the computer they're not going to see it using a font loader such as Google um, it actually loads in from the Google website or with a repository for their fonts and then the user can see the font. That's one of the reasons why we use Google Fonts is because you can get pretty fancy without the user having to have that font installed in their computer. But just for the sake of demonstration, we'll just uh, click on the Lucinda Grand and there we go, boom, new font family. Font weight normal, text decoration, cool. And we'll talk about the text shadow in just a second here. So I'm just gonna save my changes for now. I'm gonna go back to my uh, page. I'm gonna hit the refresh button and bang, woo. That is bright, but it looks good. Now we go, there we go. I might just keep that. Okay, so that's it in terms of font size, color, font family. Now we talked about the text shadow, or I talked about it just a second ago. And uh, now the text shadow is a little bit different. I wouldn't, you can play around these numbers. You'll find that it's an XY sort of above or below and how wide and how blurry and how fuzzy. Really, if you want to learn more about text shadows and CSS, do a Google search on it. Um, there's a lot of good sites with good information. I'm just going to show you a couple of tricks here to updating it. If you want a darker shadow, see this here? That's the alpha value. In other words, the transparency. It's 25% transparent. If you want a darker shadow, use a bigger number. So use something like 75. That'll make it three quarters transparent. Now these little zeros here, that re represents the color black. Pretty much when we do shadows, and things like that, we either use black or we use white and we just use an alpha value. That's way the, that way the color of the page or whatever's below it will show through at a little bit of a, an alpha or a tint <clears throat> instead of using a, a, an actual color value in here, which makes it really difficult to change if you're changing the colors. Black and white, pretty simple to deal with, but you could actually use 
actual RBG values, which it gets pretty advanced and pretty tricky to change. But we can just darken that up a little bit there. We can save it like so. When we go back here, you might actually see it darken up just a little bit. Well, it's, it does darken up a little bit. But because we're only using a one pixel shadow, it's very subtle. Um, I like using shadows and gradients and a lot of different things that CSS provides. I try not, I don't like to overdo it though, so that it makes the uh, page look mucky or dirty. So um, I try and keep them a little bit cleaner and tighter if I can. That's just my personal preference. If you want, you can definitely experiment by bumping these numbers up here. You know, start off with five and five and five and see what it does for you. All right? Save it. Go back to your page. Hit refresh. All right? And because the dark background behind the text, it's really hard to see. If we were to change it to white, which is actually 255, like so. So we replace the zeros with 255, which makes it a white shadow. That's going to give it a totally different look there. See how we got a, a white sort of haze below it, which is kind of cool, but I wouldn't keep it myself. But it gives you an idea of what a text shadow can do, and it really depends on the background behind the text and what sort of impact it's going to have. All right, finally the hover color. That's a piece of cake because it's listed right down below. Nav bar, font, hover color. There's the color. When you hover over it, same idea, backspace, shift, colon, color picker. Let's go with red, and we save, and we can refresh, and now when we hover over, we have a red color.